have written already uh, quite a lot about this theme of the numbers of 2024 and it is on my website karunkir.com so um, we have a short window here nonetheless it's good to hear something alive and uh, that's what we're here for today I have a, often a feeling that people wait for prophecies some kind of uh, fortune telling tell me the future and uh, this year it's a very relevant topic actually because let's say 24 2 plus 4 is 6 it's very much a kind of karmically worry about the future kind of number so um, and with all what's been going on in the world conflict which is also a number six quality uh, there's a lot of worry about the future too much in some way and i'd say it every year anyway that this the work that i do the approach i take is not a prophetic approach fortune telling approach uh, rather the numbers are simply giving us a theme a focus for the year to work on the properties or qualities of the numbers that each year presents uh, but certainly this number six is very much a future question number but the four because what changes this year every year really is first of all this little unit number number four change the three becomes a four so that's the first number to pay attention to what are its qualities its properties and every number has karmic or dharmic uh, expression of it so it's good to pay attention to that what is the shadow side of the number and karma and what is the dharma the bright side of it and how will we work with those themes for this year okay i must remind myself to pause here and there for translations to happen some languages take more time than others for translating so um about the, this future question because what the number four says is it asks me like what's my contribution to the future instead of oh worry what's going to happen what's going to happen this year the karma of the four is a passive passivity okay and that's our default really just i am subject to all the forces around me rather than i can influence so the number four very much asks us what do, what do i bring what are my choices what what's my contribution it's a number of giving and receiving um receiving in that sense of just receiving the impact that's the passive side the active side is is a consequence of what i receive is also what i give yeah so what am i receiving what am i giving um yeah there's three numbers then to think about the four from 24 the six because two plus four is six and then two plus two plus four 2024 that's eight and two things stand out immediately really and that's also the pairing of four and six they are a pair they work together uh, they add up to 10 i see them as two sides of an axis or two sides of the coin so there's something very potentially harmonious and very complete in this quality of 24. and then also eight this so the two and the four and the six and the eight these even numbers are also all feminine numbers so that's another thing that stands out for this year how present the feminine numbers are and that really points to the possibility of a very strong feminine awakening 
Why do I say also awakening? Because four and six are also numbers of consciousness. Four is the bud, which is linked to your heart and neutral mind. And number six is the flower. So that's the arc line and the opening up of awareness and consciousness. And they are community numbers. One, two, three is very personal, the individual, the animal. Seven, eight, nine, they're more kind of universal cosmic numbers. Four, five, and six are community numbers. So it's a year to really invest in the community. And when we talk about um, feminine awakening, it's very much a collective state. It's not enough for an individual awakening, but the collaboration and the working together, coming together of women. I've said it over many, many years that all what's going on from the residue of the Piscean um, false patriarchal kind of energy is not really going to stop until women get it together and say stop. And that means women working together, not being against each other, not competing or being jealous or withdrawing into their uh, insecurities or their self-doubts, which is a number four, by the way, karma of a number four, too much doubt, too much paralysis and passivity. So they need to uh, step up, come together into community and to kind of almost scream out. Number six is more like the battle cry. Scream out into the world. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Time stop all this nonsense. If women don't come together to say that, it's not going to happen. That's one thing. This is a general statement. It's not unique to this year, but what we say is the numbers of each year kind of lend themselves, they lend support for those qualities to come up more strong. Okay. I don't know if people are able to write in the chat, but I invite you to feel free to write comments, put forward your own insights, questions, what occurs to you as you hear uh, these themes coming up. Mm -hmm. I found an interesting little phrase, little little story on, on somewhere on the internet. Somebody asks a question. Oh, what do you think this year is going to bring? And then the person answers, flowers. Flowers? How can you say that? And then the person answers, because I'm planting flowers. That's what this year is about. Now, what are you planting? Instead of like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And being stuck in this worry. The question is, what do you decide? What do you choose? What are you contributing? This is the number four question. Yeah. It's um, four, people think about crossroads, number four, so decision making. Yeah. It means it's a decisive year, actually. Collectively, it's a decisive year. We may not see fully what that means until later in the year. Or, June is number six months, so from June onwards, I think we'll see some very clear and strong uh, indicators of what it means, how this year becomes a decisive year. Number four is the planet of uh, Uranus, which is also the planet of revolution and, and awakening. But of course, no revolution happens if we all sit passive. So. Knowing our contribution. Now, normally we think of contribution might mean action, which is number three. But contribution is also consciousness. We often underestimate the power of just consciousness itself. Am I aware? How aware am I? Am I paying attention to what I'm aware of? Many times we hear something like, we know, but we don't want to know that we know. We know, but we don't want to know that we know. We don't 
or decide from what we know. We know, but then we leave it aside. This year asks you to be with what you know, to really make choices based on what you know, not to know and then ignore what you know. Hmm. Four is also a number of prayer. We call it cup of prayer, the neutral mind, the cup of prayer. I've realized over the years that people pray, but they don't really trust their prayer. So number four is also about trust. Now, prayer is also commitment. We tie these things together. Four is about commitment. Four is about prayer. Commitment is a prayer, and a prayer is a commitment. It's an investment of yourself. Prayer is nothing without, uh, four is like two times two, two is passion. Mm -hmm. So putting your passion into the prayer, otherwise it's empty. It's a strange thing, the cup of prayer on the one side should be empty to receive, but on the other side it should be full of your passion. Prayer is a, not just a request, as an investment of your passion, an investment of your being, of your being, we could say, I invest myself. I open myself to the reality of what I pray for. So yes, pray and trust your prayer. This is very strong qualities of a number four this year. four and six the collective consciousness we've spoken of it we'll say more and um it's an element air as well four and six four is more soft embracing gentle but number six is like a sword very sharp very cutting we could even say penetrating in some way so i think of this year as a slow building up of a storm of awakening, starting with a four, gently, gently, and then building up and building up, building up. Number eight is like a tsunami energy. Can we have a tsunami of compassion? And eight is about purity, eight is healing, eight is compassion. Aid this kind of oscillation between sympathy, uh, antipathy, or empathy in the middle of the eight, in that twist of the eight. This is where empathy is. So finding this, this middle point, not being, I'm for these people and I'm against these people. Can I have, hold both sides? If I can't have compassion for one, my compassion for the other is not authentic. It's very challenging because in the middle of that eight, this is the where the five is, this is the nervous system. Can my nervous system hold that much compassion? Compassion and empathy, two different words for the same thing, to feel what others are feeling, to feel all the struggles, all the pain, so somebody has put their microphone on, Tej Vedra, his microphone is on. I don't know if I'm a co-host or somebody needs to be able to mute her. Thank you. Number eight. Four, six, and eight, this build up. of that breath, of that wind, of that, you know, it's also linked to pain. When heart is open, we are vulnerable. When we're vulnerable, we feel, when we feel, we feel pain and we feel love. In some way, we could even say you wouldn't feel love if you didn't feel pain and you wouldn't feel pain if you didn't feel love. 
You can't really separate love and pain. One is colored with the other numbers, three, which comes before the, the four. Then it's, I love this, I don't love that, I hate them, and I love them. And But four is linked to ten. One plus two plus three plus four, ten, the whole. Love all or love none. Love all or love none. There's a meaning of unconditional love. And that ten tells you the cup is like like a circle, like a ten. Can I hold the whole world in my heart without discrimination? Eight is discrimination and discernment, but as, as a means, not as a judgment. The theme of discrimination has been around for some time, isn't it? Prejudices and preferences and this kind of projections but discrimination or discernment as a means meaning what meaning it's it's a process i don't know what is true but i know what is not true i eliminate to illuminate i go to the buffet in in the restaurant i don't know what to take but i know what not to take i i don't say okay not this not that not with prejudice, not, oh, I, I hate those things. It's simply, it's not for me. This is a process, discernment as a process, discrimination as a process. When it comes in, when number seven colors it, then it becomes a prejudice, a judgment against certain people. This is subtle discernment, subtle differences we need to make here. So number four, that wholeness of the ten. Number eight, allowing the polarities both included. What sits in the middle of that twist is a paradox. Can, can I hold both this side and that side, this argument and that argument? Can I hold them both? Can I not take sides? There's a danger in neutrality becoming some kind of cold, insensitive, uncaring. Oh, I'm just neutral. Of course, this is a karma, which people refer to as spiritual bypassing. But then there can be a misunderstanding. This is people think, okay, I, I shouldn't be doing bypassing. So then I have to take a position. I have to be pro something which implies I'm anti something else. But number four is humanity. It's not one tribe or another tribe, one group or another group. It's humanity. It's a totality. I am pro humanity. No one is excluded from that. And someone may not be happy that you're not taking a position, but that is a position. And it's not insensitive. In fact, it's incredibly intense, actually, to be pro-humanity, to be willing to hold and to feel what's happening on all sides. Number four is your heart. Heart needs to be very deep, very wide, very strong. So that's a work for this year, to build the strength of your heart, to build the vastness of your heart. Mm -hmm. I'll go a little more with four, four truthfulness and service, savor, selfless service, the virtue of the neutral mind. 
serve the truth. Now we don't know what truth is, but we know what is not. Double negative, remember? So it's not about tell the truth, but it's being truthful. Being in an attitude of truthfulness. I know what I know, but I also know what I don't know. Well, that has a double meaning. I know what I don't know. Not meaning intellectually I know something, but I'm not acknowledging. Not like that. Meaning I know also the limits of what I know. I know that I don't know that. What we see is just the tip of the iceberg, really. We see such a small world, and we run in with judgments and discussions, thinking we know so much. Consciousness must, must expand, and there's always more. There's always more than what I perceive, and what I sense. So can I be open to the more, and open to more, and open to more? First of all, through time and space, and ultimately beyond the time and space. And not, you can't jump to beyond time and space. You have to go through the time and space to go beyond it. Expand. And number eight becomes infinite, timeless, akal. Number eight is akal, murat. Four is Satanam. Six is Nirbo, no fear, fearless. And number eight is Akal Murat. So, good mantra for this year Sat Siri Akal. Sat is the four. Siri, as you know, a conquered Satnam Siri, number six. That greatness of the six. And then Akal, number eight. Sat Siri Akal. It literally expresses the numbers four, six, and eight. Some of you might know this uh, great battle cry of the Sikh community. Bole so nihal sat siri akal. Bole speak so nihal. Whoever will speak will be nihal, no worries. Beyond all conditions. Hal means a condition, nihal, without condition. Free of conditions. Whoever will speak. Speak what? Sat truth. Truthfulness. Because truth is city and great. Akal, truth undying. Truth cannot be killed. Truth shall have the victory in the end. All lies, all false understanding ultimately is self destructive. Only truth survives. So it does give me a sense that this year there's going to be more revelations in a way. Six is about secrecy and exposure. Four is like withdrawal. Uh, don't tell, don't say, don't feel, don't know. But number six, we do like this. This is the bud, the closed lotus, and then it opens and it comes up to number six and it opens out, and this exposure, exposure, revelation. So the number six definitely implies something of this opening up, truth coming out more. And six can also be shock. So truth can be shocking, exposure can be shocking. Although the five is not there, 23 last year was 23 5 was a nervous system if you're lucky you did some good work last year on your nervous system because when truth comes out it can be quite intense for the nervous system five is sitting in between four and six nervous system needs to be strong to take that tsunami of truthfulness service what are you serving this year 
Because of the position of the number four, it's not the total number, it's not the day, it's not the month. It's in a very interesting place. It's actually linked to the theme of peace and humility. Can I serve peace this year? Can I serve simplicity this year? Mm-hmm. It's not a year for arrogance. It's not a year for the ego. Not a year for self-importance. That won't go anywhere this year. That, that will not have any success this year. Ekon kar satanam, number four. Ekon ong two kar three satanam. It's a year for satanam. Mm-hmm. So this is very interesting. A lot of people are getting really into crisis with all the worries and all the changes and all what's going on. They're taking it very personally. They feel afraid. Now, fear is not an individual thing, actually. It's a useful insight I'm sharing with you. When you feel fear, you're actually picking up on a collective state. It's a breeze. It's a, it's a, it's a flow of air in the atmosphere. It's not you. It's in the ambience. It's around you. When we take it in, we breathe it into ourselves and it comes into our fore, into the heart and we, I am afraid, I feel fear. You feel fear, but it's not your fear. It's a state, it's a condition in the world. Now here's an interesting paradox. Because Guru Nanak says when we have fear of God, we have no other fear. I'm talking about number six here, right? Nirbo. When I have fear of God, I'll have no other fear. Because it's a bit confusing. We want to say, like, religion has abused fear and controlled the people through fear, and even governments seem to do the same. And so we don't we don't want fear. We don't want to deal with fear. But it's a bit inauthentic really to do that. It's a bit of a bypassing. Fear is natural. Fear is an excitation in your nervous system. Fear is an, an, an anticipation. It's a future. I'm not fear of the past. I'm fear of what may be. So actually, fear is like the edge of intuition. Our client is for intuition. To sense, to pre-sense. to be tuned in to what is coming before it comes. So it's, we should be a little bit careful not to try to escape fear, but to feel the edge of it and feel the sensitivity that it brings. And then start to build your capacity to stay in that sensitivity. The mind is quick. So the mind wants to run in, and then it becomes fear of this, fear of that. And then that's karmic fear. That's the drama. But if I can just keep on the edge of it, I'm aware. I'm sensitive. I'm feeling. I'm listening. I'm breathing, breath by breath, what is coming. Pre-sensing. Pre-sensing. And it also means present. Arcline is your presence. If I'm present, I can pre-sense. Fear is actually an invitation to be present. So this real meaning of fear of God was not meant to be some kind of I'm going to be punished or terrible things are going to happen and God is judging me. And Japji tells us very clearly in the uh, near to the end, uh, the description of such in God. God is there watching over and enjoying the creation. 
enjoying. Not judging, not worrying, not, not no nonsense, just watching and enjoying. It's our mind that says God is going to do some punishing trip on us. That belonged in the Piscean Age. God is far more neutral than we realize, actually. And that's why you have the right in your prayer to say, God, watch over me. And remember what we said earlier, your commitment is your prayer, your prayer is your commitment, your prayer is your investment. And if the investment is real, then the response is real. If you decide God is compassionate and merciful, then God is compassionate and merciful. If you decide that cosmic oneness that we call God is here to judge me and punish me, then that is indeed what will come to you. Choose. This is number four. I've come back to four. Choose. Fear, fear means you remember things. If I'm worried about snakes, I always remember snakes. I have fear of snakes. I'm always thinking maybe there's a snake somewhere. So fear of something means remembering that something. Fear of God implies remember God. Remember God in three ways. Remember God within yourself through your experience. Remember God around you, see God in all, serve the God in all. Remember God in the transcendental form, the unknown of God, the nameless, the formless. Fear of God simply means pay attention. Live everything in your life in the context of that oneness. That also means yourself, include yourself, include everyone. Exclude anyone, you've somehow excluded yourself. This is a really big challenge when we have wars and conflicts, potentially needing to come into full blossom this year with the number six, you know, the full flowering of this state of tension and the eight of the polarization of the world you know behind the polarization is polarity polarization tries to build a wall one is right other is wrong one should live other should die polarity says well it's all part of the big one none is right none is wrong unless i in my mind project that is right or wrong and by what quality allows me, permits me, authorizes me to be the judge of any one as right or wrong. And this is not some bypassing I'm talking about, oh, I'm just with the light and glorious and I'm not dealing with any of that. Not at all, no, the four and six ask you to be very present, very much in the middle of all of it in the middle of the battlefield. But your battle cry is Sat Siriyakal, truth shall prevail. Truth wins in the end. And often we don't know truth, but we do sense a lie. Can you acknowledge that for a moment? Can you allow in yourself you have this capacity in you, this, I call it a barometer, a truth barometer, a truth compass. You know, mm, this doesn't feel quite real. You can't explain it. That's one reason why we don't work from that place, because the mind says, yeah, but you've got to explain, you've got to justify, you've got to analyze. And when you can't, it's just a feeling that tells you, mm, doesn't feel right, doesn't feel real.
So one of your strategies this year has to be the ability to simply say stop. And I don't have to explain and I don't have to justify, but I'm not going down that path. I have mentioned in the text that I wrote number eight, number eight, the spider. Uh, let me just check in the chat there. Meditation, any month, any meditation with Sad Siri, Siriya Kal, Siriya Kal, Maha Kal, this mantra, any meditation with this mantra, we very good. Remember Sad Siriya Kal. This is, carry that forward. At least if you can go the next 40 days of this year, 90 days, 120 days, Sad Siriya Kal, Sad Siri, Siriya Kal, go with this mantra. And what system? Yes, and glandular system is uh, number six, your endocrine system. Heart, work on your heart chakra, and which is thymus gland, and the pituitary, number six, wake up the intuition, arc line, work on your arc line very much. We say that compassion is a connection. People tend to make a connection with the heart and compassion. What I would wish to clarify for you all is that compassion, heart is not the source of compassion, but it's the channel for compassion. In the Raki Rakanahara, which we chant every morning in Sadhana, Ho Apadial Manno Navisarian. We're asking for compassion. Dial, and Dial is compassion. So it's not I am being compassionate. I'm actually being available, Seva, number four, as a channel for compassion. Compassion comes through the heart, not from the heart, but we say first compassion to self. So that means I first receive the compassion into my being. And then from there, it's shared with the world. Mm -hmm. And then interesting, that I, in my mind, in my consciousness, I shall not forget. Four and six is about that. Wake up, ring the bells. Come on, ding, wake up, Satnam, hello, remember. This is very much a year for this. Wake up, remember, remember. Ask first for that compassion to remember and then share this compassion with the world without prejudice. 24, symbol of Jupiter. Yeah, I don't know why, because um, that's number three. Four is Uranus. And number six is Venus, beauty, sharp, clear, the flower opening of Venus. But that flower opening can also be these petals can have a sharp edge to them. This is also the sword. It's a funny little image, but from some old martial art uh, movie with these little sharp discs that they throw. I don't know what they're called. But that's the, not just the flower side, but in Chinese medicine, the air element is also metal, which is the sword. So the sharp circles coming out of this opening of the flower, sending out wake-up messages to the world. A kind of confetti. It can be the wedding, beautiful, soft, rose, petals everywhere. But it can also be the sharp petals of, of uh, this little daggers, little arrows, like the Cupid. You know, there's another expression of it. The soft love, the blanket love, but the arrow, Cupid's arrow, so it's sharp and it penetrates and it goes under your skin. 
Mm -hmm. um, not very good at astrology here, so that's interesting, the symbol. But I'm not going to go into the interpretation of them, but I appreciate your sharing that in the chat. And number eight, since uh, we are also exploring that, number eight is the number of Saturn. The planet Saturn, the number of the planet Saturn, which is time. Some people say father time, but it doesn't have to be father or not father. It's relation to the primary masculine energy for sure relation to eight is not masculine it's a feminine number it's a number of the mother actually a number eight number of the mother nurturing but ma eight mother is also can be kali can be the the death mother it can be the life-giving mother and that's also the twist of the eight life and death life and death so that's for those who are into that topic of astrology uranus saturn and venus mm -hmm. so eight i'm going to probably have to finish up soon there's a lot more we can say about eight power authority energy water money economy these kind of themes come with number six uh, with eight rather six freedom and responsibility there's no freedom without the four the commitment of the four um, yes so i'm going to stay with the eight to conclude particularly the number of the spider eight eyes some spiders have eight eyes the silk which they weave they can eight types of different types of silk they can weave and of course they have eight legs so what it made me think about was the the net the web world wide web and the internet interconnection everything to everything i'm hearing a little sound somewhere some little echo somewhere check your microphones this web something moves at one part of the web it affects the whole of the web we are increasingly dependent on the web Dependency is number two, it's the other side of the number eight. Two and eight make ten. So this, uh, we, we're being drawn in to the web. Drawn into this dependency on this internet, interconnected net. Also financially, what are they calling it? Uh, digital currencies. Mm -hmm. so um this little sideline somebody asked about the number of the first day of the year which is 10 and i won't say too much about it because that's one reason why i chose to emphasize the connection of the four and the ten and the eight also being implied that circularity of the whole of the ten so this is very much a year of the, the all or nothing yeah and the four are you fully committed into your satnam or not mm -hmm. are you fully into the present to pre-sense where things are going is your prayer whole complete or it's not a prayer that's the kind of background of the 10 working yes thank you for that so the um what's up just did call that was interesting i don't know what you said there but uh she put her mic back off great the web is a medium eight is linked to water element prana chi it's a medium 
media is a medium. Water is pure. One of the qualities of Nabrai, purity, healing, cleansing. Are we going to have a cleansing out this year? But what does that mean? Is it, are we talking genocide cleansing? Are we talking about planetary cleansing with some more natural forces at work? And remember, this is not about prophecies. It's about saying these are the qualities working this year. Economical cleansing, what does that mean? Everything, because there's a big bubble, you know, so a lot of bubbles actually of kind of false economies. Economies based on false manipulations and non, yeah, false stories. So um, the aid can be cleaning out of that, which of course can imply things have to come back to some kind of equalization which normally means everything goes down to a, a lower level of the value. Because what do you, when you turn the eight up this way, what you have is some people have, are up there with a lot and some people down here with a, a little. And, you know, this twist, which circle is biggest? Yeah, the, the circle at the bottom, the circle at the top. Where's the energy? How much energy is here and how much energy is here? Where's all the money going? This kind of thing. These are just things to play with and contemplate and meditate on and be attentive to through this year. So, um, spider. Interesting also how the female spider, after mating, eats the male. So that's also, again, you know, the, this year it's possible that the potency of the male finally gets kind of consumed for a while, reduced, so that the feminine can come through the feminine force and the waves of the feminine force. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to leave it there. But this this net is going to happen a lot. We're going to be much more tied into this net. And um, we don't have to be feel bad about it. We don't have to be super like, oh yeah, get connected. You're connected anyway. The internet is just like a materialization of the connection. It's already the case. That that net has been around since the beginning of creation. Actually, there was never not a net. Some of you might know if you've done level two teacher training, Indra's net. It's always been there. What what I find interesting is that how what has been there in the non-material is materializing. So the network becomes like one materializing manifestation of the net. Because the network is a medium, then what happens is people who control the net or believe they control the net or try to get control of the net because they want to send information through the net, through the channel, through the media. Now, if you go back some steps when I talked about discernment or discrimination, being very discerning what media you tune into and what media you trust, because there's a lot of propaganda, a lot of manipulation and control over the net, and people are more and more dependent on it, and therefore there's a lot of listening into the net. It's almost unavoidable in some way. And that net works even without the technology because somebody watches the, something on their computer and then they chat to their neighbor. Their neighbor maybe says, oh, no, I don't watch the news, I don't do this. But, you know, you gossip, you talk. 
So the net goes on and everybody's into it and it's just more and more overt. But it certainly means being a lot more conscious of what you listen to, what you choose to tune into on the net. And then, if I may conclude on this one, remember at the beginning we talked about giving and receiving, but not only then what you receive from the net, but what are you sending out into the net? What frequency, what vibration, what are you presenting into the net? I would say that that would be a really valuable contribution this year to pay attention. What's your prayer? What's your vibration? What's your offering? What do you bring into the net? Okay, and just repeat a few times now. Satnam Sri Vahe Guru 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 This will be a really great frequency to send out in the net from your heart, from your Satnam into the arc line, into your presence of Sri number six and then Vahe Guru, that attitude of wonder and glory and victory and Guru from the cave of inner darkness comes the light, Ru, the light radiate, radiate, radiate. This is a blessing you can share with the world around you. Satanam Sri Vahe Guru. Hmm. Well, everybody, thank you all. I do wish you the best, best possible outcome of this. I pray with all my heart, mind, and soul that you really dedicate yourself to your absolute best possibilities of this year. The world really, really asks for it. More pain there is, more pray prayers there have to be. More pain there is, more love, and more blessings have to be. Are you busy suffering the pain? Are you busy giving the blessing? If you feel the pain, this is interesting, yeah? If you feel the pain, it's because you are being asked to give blessing. One who doesn't feel the pain, why do they care? Why should they give blessing? They don't even feel the pain that requires a blessing. You're not feeling pain because you're supposed to just get lost in the pain. You're feeling the pain because you are being called, you are being asked, you are being highlighted, you are being alerted. That's a better expression. The pain is alerting you, saying, hello, please bring blessings, please bring, bring blessings. And you use that pain. It's not like, bless, the pain is here and the blessing is there. That doesn't work. It's with that power and intensity of the pain that you give the blessing. It comes from the same place. It's the same charge, the same energy. Satnam Sri Vahe Guru. Give the blessing. Feel the pain, give the blessing. Feel the pain, give the blessing. This is a project for the next year. Let's see what little, we're just a little drop in the ocean, but it goes through the net. 